sick of this heat, man. Ready for summer to be done. This is a, this is a hazardous time of year for me. I, I'm a little dehydrated all the time. That's just a lifestyle decision I've made. I fucking hate drinking water. Like, I'll do it, because if I don't, I'll die or whatever, and think it's humiliating. You gotta drink water every day? Every day? Fuck you. Like, most of the major religions believe that God created man in his own image. But anytime I hear that, I'm always like, oh, really? Does God also have a useless body full of guts he has to keep wet? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Hate drinking water. I was reading this article recently. Apparently, there's a Greenland shark that lives in the Atlantic Ocean that scientists say might be as much as 500 years old. 500 year old, he's been around since Shakespeare. That's fucking horrifying, man. Like, I've been alive for 35 years. I don't love it. And I've got Hulu and shit. What's a shark gonna do for 500 years? I feel like after half a millennium, even a fish is gonna be like, Fuck! What does this mean? I hate drinking water. I've achieved something that most of you will never get to achieve. And that's I look on the outside exactly the way I am on the inside. <laughs> Whatever you think I'm into, correct. <laughs> well done. <Yes>. <laughs> One of the things that's super obvious looking at me is I'm very nerdy. I'm a very nerdy man. But I hate most nerds. I hate the Gamergate nerds. I don't know if you remember them. Harass women online. Just a group of dudes filled with toxic masculinity while having no actual masculinity. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're just like, I hate women. Don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> that is never coming up for you. <laughs> and now that Lord of the Rings show is on, I got a whole new group of nerds to hate. A bunch of assholes online who are like, there are no dark-skinned elves. Well, I have bad news, nerds. There are no elves. Die <laughs> anyway. I've looked my whole life. I have not found a single elf yet. And then they'll be like, well, Tolkien said they were all white. I'm like, yeah, my granddad said a lot of racist shit, too. And he's about 100 years younger than Tolkien, you know what I mean? If Tolkien were alive today, he'd get canceled in minutes, right? Make J.K. Rowling look like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> brutal. So one thing that's also pretty obvious from looking at me, I don't really like bros very much. Don't like hanging out with the bros. Because if you do, you will inevitably be asked the question, would you suck a dude's dick for a million dollars? <laughs> and that is an incredibly stupid question for all kinds of reasons. But a big one for me is that no one has ever asked the opposite question. Nobody's ever looked at me and said, hey, Dan, <laughs> would you eat a lady's pussy for a million dollars? Ooh, man, I, uh... I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Maybe I could take out a loan? I don't know. No, Dan, they pay you. What? Holy shit. Man, I would eat a million pussies for a dollar a piece.
I know it'd take me some time, but I'm willing to clear my schedule, everybody. <laughs> you know what they say, do what you love and you don't work a day in your life. I was recently flying to Phoenix. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention and I got assigned the middle seat. Yeah, <laughs> a couple groans back there, people. <laughs> Thinking about if they saw me trundling down the aisle towards them with my CPAP machine, you know, ready to, ready to fly to Phoenix. And the other two people were already in their seats, and I was very relieved when I got there because that's when I realized that uh, I was the skinniest of the three of us. Yeah, and that, was, that was a good feeling. So I just wedged myself between these two big old haystacks, right? And I looked at both these dudes and I was like, what's up guys, we putting these armrests up or what, you know? <laughs> and their eyes lit up, they're like, can we? And I was like, hell yeah, we can. <laughs> and we just melted into each other for two and a half hours on the way to Phoenix. All hot and sweaty. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> this lady has not laughed at anything I've said so far. She's just like, you look like you're my doctor right now. She's just like, I don't know. I don't think this is good. I'm worried for this guy. He's very sweaty. I don't think. <laughs> you look like Marla. Yeah, Marla, my doctor. She doesn't laugh at anything I say. Uh, yeah, if I could describe Marla with one word, it's, eh. <laughs> That's what she says every time I'm in her office trying to convince her I'm being healthier, you know? It's like, you're, you're 41, you're pre-diabetic. I had to tell her, I was like, look, everybody who doesn't currently have diabetes is pre-diabetic, okay? Yeah, that's a made-up thing, all right? And, and also, I consider a win right now, okay? I'm also pre-herpes, all right? Put that. Right? Write that on the chart, all right? Don't let them bother you. <laughs> Anytime I'm in a room with this many people, I can't even help it. I play this little game in my head called, what if the race war started now? <laughs> it's never wise to play in Portland. The numbers are never on my side. <laughs> it's way better than playing in my hometown of Boise, Idaho. I'll tell you that. <laughs> You know, because people there think the race war started when my family moved there, you know, so a lot more prepared. I want to preface this next joke by letting everyone know I agree with Greta Thunberg. I am on board with her ideas, but I also feel like she's famous mostly because white women wanted their own Malala. You saw the Browns having something nice and you're like, oh, we got to get us one of those. That's nice. Then Greta showed up like, how dare you? You're like, she's perfect. <laughs> Young, female, foreign, politically forward, most importantly, pale as the sunrise. <laughs> Climate change is a serious threat, but a more unstoppable force in this country is a white woman on a journey to shoehorn herself into every conversation. <laughs> yeah, lost the white women there. Great big fucking surprise, that is. <laughs> I know this because Gwen Stefani's been telling people she's Japanese. She's not. She's not. Gwen Stefani's Japanese in the same way that Mike Pence is a heterosexual. Like, that's what he says. But I'm not convinced. I'll leave Gwen alone. You know, it's just disappointing because there are white ladies out there doing incredible things. Incredible things. Like that cop in Tennessee that slept with all her coworkers. Do you guys know about this? Some of you know this story. If you don't know, there's a town in Tennessee called Laverne, Tennessee. And a few months back, a cop there got in trouble because she had sex with like six dudes in her own department. Everybody found out, it made national news, they all got fired. I did a little more research and I found out there's only like 70 cops in all of Laverne, Tennessee. So that single night soiree caused a 10% reduction in staff. You see what I'm trying to say? That pussy was so good, they defunded the police, all right? <laughs> Which is amazing. Which is amazing. I watched this city protest for weeks and fail to achieve something she pulled off with a single gangbang. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. She worked the system from the inside by letting the system work her inside. She's amazing. <laughs> I get road rage a lot. I wonder if people got road rage like uh, back when they were riding a horse. 
You know, just a guy like, where the fuck did you learn to ride a horse? Just like, pissed off. You know they had the same judgments we do? You'd see a guy on his horse and be like, wow, look at the cock on that stallion. Someone's compensating, Jesus. So, somebody's wife picked their horse, fuck. <laughs> I'm turning 31 this year. Uh, I'm too stupid to be this old. I am, like the other day my friend was showing me pictures of his dog and I couldn't remember the word breed. So I asked him, what strain is your dog? <laughs> what a dumb fucking question. <laughs> He's like, I think you mean breed. I'm like, whoa, I don't want to fuck it. I mean, come on, it's, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I did, I grew up in a small farm town and you know, you learn different things growing up in a small town. Like uh, my mom drove a stick shift. So I learned how to roll cigarettes at a young age. <laughs> It is, uh, I've been, uh, my last girlfriend taught me about uh, love languages. I didn't know about that. I didn't have, I didn't grow up with love. Uh, just, <laughs> she told me I didn't use hers enough and she said her love language was receiving gifts. Yeah, how convenient. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I forgot my offerings. <laughs> I felt like a loser because I told her mine. I'm like, I like words of affirmation. <laughs> She's like, great, I like presents. I'm like, fuck, can I change mine? Huh? Right? My car needs floor mats. Can that? I don't know. I had a girl tell me once. She's like, could you come in my hand? Ugh. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Why? So you can throw it back at me? I don't want that. I do like uh, dirty talk. I like dirty talk. I really like when dirty talk goes off the rails. You know, like one of you just says something just weird. Like uh, I was going down on this woman and she goes, ooh, what does it taste like? I was stumped. <laughs> yeah, I tried to roll with it. I'm like, wow, mm, who made this pussy? Gordon Ramsay? This is incredible. <laughs> Hey, this is amazing, a mamma mia. <laughs> uh. All right, you want the truth? I don't know. Tastes like you peed recently. <laughs> well, first we have David Twighty, everybody. David Twighty. Hey, David Twighty, David. Everybody. David Twighty was all up in them wet guts. <laughs> If David wins the contest, he's going to quit his job as a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. He actually came here straight from, uh, from his job holding a parrot at Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Yeah, David reminds me a lot of Norm MacDonald. They're both great, silly joke writers, and neither one of them will ever have a glass of water ever again. <laughs> <laughs> he got his shirt from Goodwill and his haircut from Hot Topic. <laughs> he looks like he cuts his hair with a dashboard confessional CD. <laughs> Up next, we got Dan Weber, everybody. Here we go Dan, Dan Weber. Dan Weber, Dan Weber everybody. everybody. Dan looks like he teaches improv at graveyards. <laughs> Uh, Dan came here from his job being the wizard on the mural on the side of a van. <laughs> I had something similar. I wrote, Dan looks like he sells curses behind a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> Dan looks like a vampire that only sucks the hope out of people. <laughs> Up next, Jeremiah Coughlin, everybody. Jeremiah, 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 Jeremiah Coughlin, Coughlin, everybody. That's right. <laughs> Jeremiah, a.k.a. every TSA agent that ever said, I need you to step to the side for a second. <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. Strawberry Chris Farley. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a Prius down by the river. <laughs> Uh, Jeremiah looks like the bully from every Nickelodeon kids show. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Pete and Pete. 
<laughs> Jeremiah is the palest orangutan I have ever seen in my whole entire life. Jeremiah looks like his main source of income is picking up everything that falls underneath a carnival ride. <laughs> That's mean. Uh, he looks like if Oppenheimer detonated a bunch of pubes on top of his head. <laughs> Up next, Neeraj Srinivasan, everybody. Neeraj Srinivasan, everybody. Neeraj asked, what if the race war started now? And I was like, then you wouldn't be on the front line, Neeraj. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter if Neeraj wins or loses the contest, because to his parents, he'll always be not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's fu that's too real, man. That's fucked up. <laughs> He's told me that before. It's like just saying. <laughs> up next we have Brian Bixby, everybody. Hey, Brian Bixby, hey, everybody. Brian came out with big shop teacher energy. <laughs> uh, I was glad to see Brian be in here tonight because that means my car isn't getting towed. Yeah. I'm just glad to see the kid from Making a Murderer changing his life after he got out of prison. <laughs> uh, Brian looks like he discovered porn after trying to Google pork. <laughs> Brian has resting cover your drink face. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's a good looking guy. Uh, his face is a Portland 7 and his body's a January 6th. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God damn. Nariko Ott, Adam Posse, everybody. Adam Posse. Love you. Hey, Brandon.